Okay, guys. Well, thanks so much for being here tonight. Uh, as always, we really appreciate you taking time out of your Tuesday to come enjoy episode 12 of season two of Line Change with Mayhem head coach Ryan Michael. Our player guest joining us tonight are defenseman Oscar Arfelt and Wojtek Zemlitska. Let's hear it for these two gentlemen. Also, I wanted to congratulate those of you in attendance tonight who were a part of history on Saturday. Um, those of you who were in attendance at the Mayhem game um, were a part of the largest crowd in Mayhem franchise history. So give your, yourselves a round of applause for that accomplishment. It was an absolutely incredible atmosphere, and I think I speak for everyone when I say this, but it truly did help the team in all senses of the word. And um, we're going to get into all that here on this show. Um, in fact, that's the first question I wanted to ask you guys. Uh, up here on the panel. All three of you, I'd like an answer from. Um, this past Saturday, like I just said, it was the largest uh, crowd we've ever had at a Mayhem game in franchise history. Uh, what was it like to play in front of that crowd on Saturday? Um, you know, it was pretty cool uh, being a part of this organization as a player and, and a coach for the five years um, and, and being fortunate to win the whole thing and, you know, having, you know, more than 2,000 of what we had in the championship game mm -hmm. that year. I mean, it was, it was crazy. You know, coming out to for warm ups to go to do the coaches talk and seeing the amount of people and just watching it, you know, keep coming and it just it seemed like it never ended. It was really cool and um, you know certainly it helped our guys. You know, we were battling a little bit of a, a bug kind of going around, myself included. So um, you know, just the energy that you know that crowd created for us on the bench and, and on the ice certainly kind of got us over the hump. Um, you know, for those three periods, so it was great. Yeah, no, it was sort of amazing. It's always fun playing in front of a big crowd. Mm -hmm. You know, it uh, gives us a little extra energy, a little extra spark that's sometimes needed. And just hearing the guys cheer on you, it just it really, like after a long shift or something, it really does make a difference. You kind of feel invincible out there <laughs> with all the help. And so it was a great atmosphere, and it was my, only my second home game. So mm -hmm. if we get anything close to that, it would be amazing for the rest of the year. Yeah, uh, yeah it's... As they both of them said, it's very nice to play in front of the crowd like this. I've been here for about, I don't know, eight weeks, and this was prob this was for sure the largest crowd mm -hmm. I played in front of this season. And you know, a lot of a lot of guys were struggling with sickness, injuries, and it just get us going. And it feels like unstoppable out there when the crowd cheers. Yeah, absolutely. There really couldn't have been too much more of a second wind with the, the, flu, the flu and the illnesses that were going around the team than having uh, that many people in attendance on Saturday. So, Coach, I wanted to ask you about that and, and kind of segue into what we're talking about here for next weekend. Um, some people, some coaches kind of believe in this more so than others, I would say, but do you believe it's possible to really harness that momentum that was generated from Saturday night's win and kind of roll with it heading into this three-game weekend we have coming up? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, you know, for me, it's, it's confidence inspiring. And, um, yeah, just the way we played, and especially defensively, I felt like in the, in the second and especially the third, we kind of, you know, shut them down for good bits of time. And, you know, that's a team that, you know, wants to circle around the ice and, you know, gain speed and have a bunch of chances off entries and their D are going to join the rush and, you know, for the most part, I felt like we forced them to get away from their game and, and dump pucks in and try to go retrieve them. And, um, you know, that's certainly the way we have to play moving forward and understand that, you know, it's not always the easiest way or the most exciting way is, is to make teams earn it all over the ice. But, you know, for we did that for most of that night. And, um, you know, certainly the confidence that we can take away from that as a group and, and you know, that we can play that way and, and force teams away from their game. And, you know, we did a great job kind of on the counter attack and, and scoring off the rush against, against Knoxville Saturday. So, um, you know, certainly taking, you know, that confidence and, and maybe that style of play over to this weekend is, is certainly something I believe we can, we can do. Yeah, and once we go on the road, um, both of you guys as players uh, know exactly what it's going to take to play against your former team's Wojtek with you. It's, it'll be on Saturday against Roanoke, and then Oscar with you on Sunday against Fayetteville. Um, and, Oscar, you've played now a couple of games with the Mayhem. You've got a few under your belt. And since you've arrived, how do you feel that uh, you've adapted to Coach Michael's system and to the way that we play here? Um, well, I like to say myself pretty well, I'd say, at least. <laughs> um, no, I like it. Um, gives us a lot of freedom within the systems mm -hmm. to kind of like do our thing um, like try different things that make sense like but 
we have our like base points we focus on defensively, offensively, and all that stuff. And then within those frames, it's kind of up to us to create and stay disciplined. So um, no, I really like it. Um, I would call him a player's coach, which I always prefer to mm-hmm. playing for. And like he's played a ton himself, so it's you know he knows what it takes to win games, and like he, he, you can relate to what his knowledge and all that stuff. So it's always easier to play for a coach like that. Sure. And, guys, I don't know if uh, you're familiar with this uh, scenario, exactly what happened with Oscar, but the, the game before he was traded here, um, there was an issue with the Zamboni up in Fayetteville. Uh, the very next game he plays, there was an issue with the boards here in Macon in a different city with a different team. So I thought uh, it was worth asking him before the game on Friday if he felt like he was cursed. Um, <laughs> He said he didn't think that he was cursed, but if it happened again on Friday, then he might reconsider. So, Oscar, is it good now feeling that uh, the curse has officially been lifted? Yeah, no, it was, it was pretty nice because it would have been a tough selling point for me for the rest of my life knowing <laughs> this guy just breaks ice wherever he goes, you know. So, no, it definitely felt good to play yeah. a full 60-minute game. Oh, definitely. Um, okay, uh, Wojtek, the next question I have is for you. Um, you were teammates with Colton Wolter up in Roanoke for a good little while. You got to know each other pretty well. Um, how did it feel to not only witness him scoring that hat trick on Saturday, but also to have a big part in it, um, getting a couple assists on the board as well? Yeah, uh, so I would start with I already played with Colton Water three years ago in Mississippi. Mm-hmm. We were already roommates as well. And past season in Roanoke, we played together. And this year, I started in Roanoke. We were roommates as well. So I know him very well. He's a nice guy, great hockey player. And I'm very happy we brought him in. And uh, I knew what he can do, and he proved it. And hopefully it just keeps rolling, you know, and we keep winning games. Yeah. Uh, now, for those of you who might not know, that is a, a Czech accent that you're hearing. Um, <laughs> Wojtek, I wanted to ask you about that specifically because, um, you know, in the game programs, you stated that your fun fact was that you love to cook. Um, yeah. So are there any recipes that you consider your signature, anything from, uh, your, from your homeland in the Czech Republic that you brought over here that you might be willing to share? Uh, I don't think I have any res- recipes. Uh, mm-hmm. I just, I don't li- like... Back home, we don't really go eat out as it's usual here. Mostly we eat home. So I'm used to cooking, and uh, I got some receipts from my mom uh-huh. what I cook, but most of it, it's just, you know, simple food, simple meals. Simple meals. It's nothing, nothing crazy. Well, hey, maybe uh, talk to the folks here at the Rookery. They might give yeah. you a part-time job <laughs> after the show. <laughs> Uh, they, yeah, see, he's got you. All right, guys, that's all the questions I have. Um, the people that I normally have helping me out with the crowd mic aren't here tonight, so I'm going to step down and pass the crowd mic down. Uh, Debbie, if you don't mind uh, holding on to it first. You, oh, okay, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, the only thing we ask when you ask your questions is please do so into this microphone here. Um, we just want to make sure that we get everyone's questions heard and then play it back later on our uh, archived version on YouTube later on. I was just wondering if you could explain that, that fiasco that happened when Urban came out the box where oh, we yeah. didn't have enough players on the ice or I, we should have had enough players on the ice. I knew this one was coming. <laughs> so um, so that whole thing happened. He steps out of the box. I didn't like watch the play, but from what I was told, he played it when his feet were still in the box, which is obviously a penalty. So uh, the linesman had came over to me telling me the situation at no point explained that I needed to put anybody in the box. So we start... The, the play, they drop the puck, two minutes expires, and we have no one coming out of the box, so I'm sending somebody over the boards, and the, the time, every, the play's going on. So the linesman's coming up and down the benches telling me I can't put somebody on the ice, and I'm yelling back that you didn't tell me I had to put somebody in the box, so I didn't. So that was whatever seconds, at which point Koplinger, I think it was, jumped over the boards, and they blew it dead, and the three of them got together, the ref came over and said that was their fault for not explaining the situation. And I said, I know. <laughs> and uh, that's pretty much kind of what happened. So, um, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't happy. Um, I wish I had an assistant because I was getting to the point during that of, of losing my cool. So, um, but, you know, that, it happens, I guess, and, and we'll move on. Do you know what caused the fight between Urban and he went in the box, and they came back out and started fighting again. Do I know why? Or I no? I mean, 
they probably said they're probably talking in the box or something to each other. I'm not really, I'm not really sure. I could have sworn there was something involving P.S. and Tini as he was skating by. Maybe. Urban stepped out, but I didn't get a great look at it myself. Uh, my question is uh, for Oscar. Uh, as a kid, you briefly played with two guys I actually watched last night, uh, William Nylander and Dmitry Timoshev. Uh, and I was wondering if you remembered playing with them and if there was anything that kind of set them apart that like, kind of signified they were good enough to go to the show even that young. Um, yeah, I feel for both of them, especially William. You could kind of tell from an early age that this kid has something special. I mean, he... Play with me. I'm two years older than him, um, so he. I played with him when I was 17, and he was 14, 15, and he was already standing out playing with us. And just his poise with the puck, his skating ability, and his shot. And I mean, it certainly helps having a dad that played you now 15 seasons in the NHL too. So he definitely got homeschooled pretty well. But no, you could you could tell from an early age that he's going to be something special. Do you know his brother at all, the younger one? Yeah, Alex. Alex yeah. Um, he's a better friends with my little brother, but okay. uh, yeah, no, kind of know their whole family. So I'm hoping he really takes off because I'm a Blackhawks fan, yeah. so no, fingers he, crossed. He looks very good in summer skates at least, so it okay. should be good. Good to know. <laughs> So the double minor on Timo, what was up with that, and when are we going to see more of his fights? I don't even remember that. Yeah, yeah me so. either. Yeah, when, when was that? Why do I not remember that? Saturday? Saturday? He got a double minor? Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, okay. No, I, I don't know. I was trying to get him off the ice to change, and he got about two feet away, and that whole thing went down. So um, cause I, we ended up short out of that, right? Yeah. yeah. That's I wasn't. I mean, to be honest, I wasn't too happy with the result of that. Um, but you know, he killed it off, and it's it's tough with him. You know, he's always got that kind of fire in him. You know, you've seen it with uh, Peoria's goalie, and I think he's fought a couple other guys. So. Um, Certainly, you know, admire and appreciate, you know, his heart and his willingness to kind of do that for a guy that's smaller and, and more skilled. So, um, you know, I'm never going to say I got to rein him in by any means. But, um, you know, if he had changed a little sooner, I think that thing doesn't happen. So. <laughs> Changing gears only slightly, Etma's. What's with uh, him being pulled? I get that, but wearing his mask the entire time, the prior game and the following game on the bench. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, he uh, was a little displeased in how we, we played that first period, and I kind of, you know, I don't fault him on that. Those two goals, they were, you know, just, you know, some lazy plays on our end. So, um, you know, he was a little upset, and, um, you know, things happened in, in kind of the, the room that were unfortunate. So it just kind of was my decision to, to put Stu in, um, not only because I felt like we needed a jump as a team, but um, just something I had to do. So um, that was, I, I don't know why he wore, I don't know why. I mean, Porter took a, a puck to the eye when we were in Birmingham without the mask on. So maybe he was worried about that. I don't know. I'm not sure. Sean, the uh, gentleman. Uh, oh, we, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sir. We need to get it all archived for our episode afterwards. Sorry about that. I notice when they bite, sometimes they're taken off the ice, and then they show right back up again. What Does the ref just take them off, let them cool off, or what, what's it, up with that? It depends how much time's left in the period. So if, you know, 
depending on how much time is left in the period, if their time in the box is greater, then they'll just send them to the locker room because there's really no point in, in putting them in the box, especially for something to happen maybe after the, the whistle, after the period's over. All right, my question is for Wojciech. Was that close? <laughs> yeah. Good. Uh, That's good enough. So uh, the latest edition of the game day programs, which good job with those, Alex. Thank you. Uh, says that you love to cook. <laughs> uh, do you have a favorite dish you like to make or a pre- particular style of food that you enjoy making? Great minds think alike, uh, Sean. Probably my favorite is a uh, schnitzel. That's one of the things we eat back home a lot. Schnitzel with smashed potatoes. I take it you asked that while I was gone? Yep. Yes. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> we got a different answer though, so it's all right. I'm, I'm yeah. <laughs> well, I'll take another one then. Um, so this past weekend, we had some uh, pretty interesting looking theme jerseys, uh, and I was curious as to uh, in seasons past what your favorite theme jerseys have been. Well, I obviously really like the Game of Thrones one. I wasn't here for it, unfortunately. But looking back at it, it was pretty slick. I liked it. I don't know. I, I like the Peanuts one this year mm-hmm. a good bit. I thought those were nice. Um, the Game of Thrones one, again, I wasn't here either, but those were pretty cool. I literally can't even. I think the Christmas ones we wore my last year playing, the red and green. The red and green ones, I like those, but. I can't even. I feel like we wear so many sometimes that it's hard <laughs> to keep track of what's what. So, well, I mean, I was here only for I think two special night jerseys. So, I mean, any from like when you were in other cities too. That's fine. Uh, I'll take it personally. <laughs> you know what? I honestly like our white jerseys the most. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I thought the ones we wore Saturday were pretty cool. And, I mean, yeah, we had some nice peanut ones, Christmas jerseys, and some Avengers night that I thought was pretty nice, fun, too. And, I mean, we don't really do that stuff back home in Sweden or in college where I played before, so it's definitely a new experience for me with all the crazy jerseys. But I, I like it. Yeah, it's fun. This is for the coach, and I know it's nothing you can do about it, but when players have to go off the ice and go back to the locker room for an equipment malfunction or something along those lines, you have no control over how long they're going to be gone because you've got to wait for a whistle to come back in. How frustrating is that? Because it's not like a two-minute penalty where they can just come back on the ice when it's over. Yeah, I mean, it is it is what it is. I don't. I mean, we had that run in on um, um, Saturday only medically because a couple guys had to get you know IVs because we're all sick. Um, so I think, I think it was Cameron was late almost, or he came out just before the period started. So, um, it's a challenge at times, especially because, you know, I'm, I'm ready to say somebody and then, you know, maybe I don't see them get off the ice to go get their, uh, their skate sharpened or or whatever fixed. So I get reminded pretty quick that they're not even on the bench. So then I got to scramble to find somebody else. So, um, I don't know. I mean, it wouldn't be as bad if we had, you know, more than 18 guys dressed, I think. But, um, you know, when you have, you know, last year we had this problem uh, with skate sharpening, I think. So we would, there were times where we'd be missing like two or three guys at a time. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's frustrating for sure, especially those stretches where there's no whistle for, you know, six, seven minutes, five minutes, and you got the same, whatever, 4D going or the same six forwards going, so. <clears throat> Normally, how many players would you have on a team that are dressed? Uh, well, 19 on the roster, but it doesn't include um, we have five three game tryouts every year and then five amateur tryouts so those don't count against your roster so technically I could have you know over well over 20 but um, 19 roster 18 max can dress 
for the game. Thank you. Speaking of the game tryouts that you still have, do you have any left, and do you plan on using them? Oh, yeah. Um, I got three or two three-gamers left, and I have my five uh, amateur tryouts. Those can't be used um, until the end of February, so or the last 15 games of the year, excuse me. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm saving those to bring some guys in, uh, especially some college guys that are that are free for the spring. So we're kind of a few weeks away from that. So, um, you know, hopefully my my year in college back in New York kind of and those connections I built will, will pay off and um, we'll get some, some younger guys down here and, and kind of get a look at them. So in looking over some of the uh, goals that got scored against us this weekend, I noticed kind of an odd trend that five out of the seven that got scored were off of transition rush chances. Uh, is this something you think that is just kind of a weird weekend fluke or something that needs to be addressed or little column A, little column B? I think it's both. Um, you know, I thought Saturday we were pretty good with it, with, with their transition. And for me, it's just like, um, you know, Huntsville's first goal Friday – um, it was just lazy play. I mean, we we didn't start that game off well to begin with, but it was, you know, a bad pinch by the D, and then, you know, forwards didn't back check well enough, and we were when we did, we were actually in the right position. We just didn't get our head on a swivel and, and see the guy break into the net. So, um, you know, I think it's both. I think it's it's a bit of support between the D and the forwards in the sense that, you know, D got to do a better job of knowing when and not to pinch and, you know, where's the danger in pinching, what's the risk reward of doing it. Um, and then our forwards just got to back check a little better. And that's kind of, you know, I thought Saturday was a hundred times better with that. And that's why we saw for the most part, you know, we limited a lot of their rush offense in the second and the third, especially kind of forced them to the outside and the dump puck. So, um, yeah, I mean, I wasn't happy with it for sure. Um, so, I think it's I think it's a bit of both. This one's for both players up there. Last night, you guys had the team dinner thing. I know I've seen a lot of positive comments from the fans <laughs> who said they really enjoyed. How about you as the players? You guys enjoy that type of a. Uh, you know, opportunity to sit in with fans and have a discussion? Yeah, we, I'm sure all of us did. It's, you know, it's nice to uh, go with the boosters for dinner like this and, like, you know, do some Like, they do for us so much, so it's nice to do at least something like this for them and spend some time with them, you know. Yeah, no, it's definitely nice. It's fun to get to meet the fans, <laughs> get a little one-on-one -on -one with them. I can actually talk and not just a fist bump walking on or off the ice and and especially when it's a free meal on the line too it's oh it's a bonus no but it's it's fun uh, bonding talking to them you know they can ask you a little more personal questions on like where you're from and things like that and how you like the town and stuff so it's no it's definitely a fun time for all of us i hope All right, uh, this one's for both of you, both the players. Uh, both of you are a little newer to making here. I mean, Wojciech, you've been here a little bit longer, but uh, for some of the fans who aren't as familiar with your game, what would you say is the strongest part of your game, and what is the part you'd like to work on the most? It's a good question. Yeah, it's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, my strong side is uh, skating. But what I need to work on is mostly like a gap thing, you know, between uh, me and the player, Mr. Puck, you know, get closer to him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think my strongest asset is to play with the puck, like, you know, smart passes to smart breakouts. And then the thing I like to work more on is a bit more skating because that will allow me to be better defensively and offensively, kind of you know, improve my game overall. So, yeah.
All right, you guys. Any other questions? <laughs> okay. Um, so I've always been curious, this is for the players, what kind of conversations do you all have between each other and with the opposing team when you're on the ice? Any nice words? or? Uh, <laughs> I don't think you want to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, we definitely can't say all the things that be yeah. being said in here. But um, I mean, sometimes it's good fun. Like you'll joke around with the players on the opposing teams. But, yeah, sometimes it gets pretty heated. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe next year we'll shake it up and have a live version where you could say whatever you want, and then a then an archive version where I censor everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, mic them up on the ice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We've yeah. All right, guys. Well, if there's nothing else, we're going to uh, proceed forward with our last part of the show. Um, Coach, I've just got uh, one more question for you before we go ahead with the trivia question. Uh, it's another three-game weekend we've got coming up. seems like there have been a lot of those for us lately. Um, Huntsville at home on Friday, then Roanoke on Saturday on the road, Fayetteville on Sunday afternoon on the road. Uh, obviously a very challenging schedule that lies ahead. Uh, what's in your eyes going to be considered a successful weekend at the end of, of Sunday night on that bus ride home from Fayetteville? Um, you know, I think it's a mixture of, of points one and, you know, my, my gut feeling of how we played. And, um, you know, just like Peoria, you know, the weekend before, I thought we played well enough to win both those games other than maybe the third on Saturday, but, you know, only came away with one. So uh, I think it's it's the mixture of, you know, we got to play the right way, and we got to do it, you know, consistently for 60 minutes for three games. And um, at the same time, you know, there's no moral victories. We got to still make up ground. So we got to find a way to to get as many as many points as possible out of the weekend. It's going to be tough. I mean, um, the second half of the year is always backloaded with these three and threes, and you know, it's it's easier when it's three at home. But um, going from Roanoke on um, you know Saturday night and playing in Fayetteville Sunday at three o'clock is you know it's it's not going to be easy against a top team but um, you know that's just it's going to be that much sweeter you know if we if we find a way to win those games so um, just just the mixture of points and, and kind of my gut feeling of, of how well we play absolutely well we'll be uh, rooting you guys on from making this weekend for sure um, Friday we can't wait for our family four pack our second to last family four pack night of the season this Friday um, you can visit our, our website makingmayhem.com to get it that way if you're interested it'll also be our Mardi Gras night uh, speak with Zach Smith for details on that I'm not exactly sure what he's got planned for Mardi Gras night against Huntsville but then of course an, ex- uh, an enticing two points on hand against, uh, against Roanoke on Saturday who are in a pretty similar spot that we're in right now they're chasing a playoff berth and um, very important points there and then a Sunday afternoon clash which are always challenging against Fayetteville on Sunday all right folks the last question I have is for uh, everyone in the audience you're uh, more than welcome to take a crack at it the uh, trivia question whoever can answer it correctly will win an autographed puck from Oscar and Wojtek the question is this before Saturday night when was the last time a mayhem player scored a hat trick Wow, on the money. Congratulations. <laughs> that was impressive. Let's give a round of applause for that. Somebody pays very close attention. I appreciate that. Okay. Well, there we go. All right, guys. Well, thanks so much for coming out tonight. We really appreciate it. Hope you've enjoyed your meals, and we'll see you on Friday night. Thank you, guys.